Labour uh, Minister Moses uh, calling. Mr. Minister, welcome to the Bumpo Show. Thank you, sir. And how you doing? I'm okay. Uh, I mean, we're trying to do our best. I know. Family wise, has it? Why, you mean from the job side? From family wise. Oh, family wise, yeah. Yeah, just I'll give by the grace of God. Okay. We are trying, and the other one is moving on stronger. Okay, that's good. Now, Mr. Minister, let's uh, first uh, uh, bring you to this one. Uh, you you took over, I'm sure. Uh, you were one of the uh, interviewers appointed uh, immediately the government took over. Yeah. Uh, you've been in the labor sector or trying to uh, affect all of the reforms and make all of the improvements and, and better the sector for us. If you were to just recollect, Mr. Minister, what are some of the things you can be pointing out that you've been doing? First of all, uh, firstly, let me acknowledge uh, the opportunity given us okay. to appear you know, on your platform. Uh, we took over the labor sector to be precise. Um, uh, February 13, 2018. Mm. Uh, when we took over the labor sector, we inherited uh, so many challenges, mm. uh, so many cases, complaints, unresolved issues. And so we we accepted the challenge as you know the head of that institution. Mm. We knew the challenges, and so we accepted the challenge and. So when we took over, the first thing we did was to review our mandate and uh, review those issues, those major issues that were pending, you know, I mean, on the dockets. Mm. And uh, you will agree with me that the uh, labor sector across uh, the globe, I mean, is a huge, you know, challenge uh, because, uh, I mean, disagreements within the labor sector is now in a unique Liberia. Okay. And so what we did was uh, firstly in order to fast track you know many of the issues is to I mean what we did was to encourage the issue of uh, you know social dialogue uh, which is also legal on the decent way out of Liberia and, uh, even though uh, in the many of the cases uh, went to a formal hearing what you may call you know administrative hearing mm -hmm. or at the Ministry of Labour. Yes, at the Ministry of Labour, because we have what we call, you know, administrative tribunal. Mm -hmm. uh, that is not a code of record. So, I mean, we have, you know, achieved a lot as a team. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a very unique, you know, team at the Ministry of Labour. And uh, because of our coordination, consultation, respect for one another views, uh, so we have achieved a lot. Okay. Now, Mr. Minister, if you were to just give us uh, an idea as to how you think you can really paint the sector, the labor sector, what could be your words in trying to paint the sector for us? Well, um, I mean, the sector, I mean, considering, you um, know, the sector itself uh, regarding uh, uh, labor issues, mm. uh, you will agree with me that um, we have been faced with uh, you know, a lot of issues, um, but uh, the good thing is that uh, we have built you know, that courage mm. to see how we can improve you know, the sector. And so because of that, uh, we decided to move on and uh, we have achieved a lot. Uh, I mean, uh, ranging from uh, cases from as far back as you know, 2015, mm. 2016, 2017, you know, 2017 was a political year. Sure. So uh, uh, some people, both the employers and the employees, you know, may have taken you know, advantage of, uh, you know, the basic period of the administrators, you know, at the time. Mm. And so there were a lot of issues. And mm. so if you may ask for some of the, the cases, yeah, yeah. you know, the major achievements, mm. uh, you know, the first thing we will, I mean, point to was there was a crisis. That took, I mean, that, that took place at the B Mountain. Okay. You know, uh, that is in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. You know, they bought the, you know, gold mine. Yeah, sure. You know, and I mean, there were a lot of, you know, challenges uh, where the you know, police went in there. You know, the story. Mm -hmm. There was tension very high, but we, we went in there. Uh, you know, what we did was uh, those who were required to be, you know, reinstated, to be paid off as by the labor law. That was our first, you know, major achievement. Mm. The second one was the APM terminal. 
if being a terminal had an issue of uh, you know on um, paid leave you know benefits mm. and uh, you know the the free port of Monrovia is the gateway to the economy okay but to the days you know no continent could live you know the free port of Monrovia so mm. that drew the attention of, of of the head of the executive you know his excellency the president okay. and uh, we moved in there and um, with you know the teamwork uh, uh, from the justice minister because you know at that time you know it became you know a national security issue where the economy was I mean so hard block mm. and so we 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 took charge of it you know at the labor ministry and uh, we were able to resolve that where uh, you know Liberians you know employees mm. uh, were able to benefit as high as you know sixteen you know fifteen thousand you know individually. Mm. They did that without, you know, going through, you know, legal process, without going through, uh, you know, formal court hearing where they'll be required, you know, um, to hire a lawyer, no, sure. you know. So we use our social dialogue, you know, you know, initiative. Mm. And, uh, so we achieve, you know, with that. Now, we 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 have other issues all around. Today, as we speak, the issue of Aslamita. Mm. You, I know, I mean, on your platform, yeah, sure. they hear mm -hmm. that uh, the rail was blocked over and over and again since 2018, back and forth. Mm -hmm. when, I mean, in Bikena, in Yekipa, where police went all around. Today, I can assure you, uh, so uh, by this week. By, by this week? By this week, as we speak, mm -hmm. if I, uh, as a Friday, mm -hmm. uh, workers, you know, started signing, you know, releases. About this week, this week is not going to, to go without them getting a church. Mm. So, meaning this government, honor president, we are is achieving a lot. I mean, as it relates to you know, trying to settle dispute mm. between employers and employees. Mm. And don't forget, uh, our work at the labor ministry is not only limited to the labor sector, you uh, we also look at the, the issue of uh, you know, human trafficking, mm. you know, you we look at the issue of uh, you know, child labor. So those are issues that we'll be busy with, and uh, I think uh, our international partners, uh, you know, they have actually held the work of, of the present team at the Labour Ministry. Now, if if you were to, uh, Mr. Minister, look at the the, uh, the the root cause, you know, that often generates uh, the the sort of dispute between the employers and the employees. Is it as a result of the lack of knowledge about the labor law? Uh, do we need to, to, to initiate a campaign to begin educating our people about the labor law, about what the labor law says? You know, um, so, uh, and, and, and this is where we, we, might, we might be inclined to, to, to prescribe some new measures mm. uh, as it relates to who we, we acknowledge as a trade union. I know yeah. all of the trade unions that we know, they exist you know, legally, mm. but uh, we think that uh, the work of the union is to help you know, handle some of the issues that may, may come about between the employees and the employer. Okay. And, and this is key. It's not just about you know collecting fees mm. because you are the conduit between the employee and the employer. Because within the labor sector, we have a tripartite council. Okay. The National Tripartite Council is inclusive of the employers association, the employees association, and the government through the Ministry of Labor. Okay. So, if if the council is fully functional. And, and don't forget, we had the council established, you know, since last year. Mm. So the union, the the employees association, need to be strong, you know, more stronger in engaging the the, the, the employers, mm. you know, so that uh, those those issues that are to be handled at the level of the union, you know, should not just come at at, at the Ministry of Labor. Mm. But we have observed that uh, almost. Every little issue that are to be handled between the union and the ministry, I mean, and their employer, I mean, everything is coming to the ministry, and mm. and and we are becoming to be overwhelmed, you know, with so many, you know, you know, little issues, you know, that are to be handled at the workplace. Mm. So we might be, I mean, uh, 
we are contemplating on coming up with new measures okay. uh, that will require, you know, every every mm -hmm. union, you know, you got to step out, you know, those requirements are going to put out there that will have it to be a good standard. Mm -hmm. Now, I did ask you the question that, you know, uh, if we were to look at some of the, because you've been uh, intervening in, in some of these sort of, you know, labor disputes at, at those institutions, like the beer mart in other places. Now, if we were to look at the the, the the, the causes, you look at you know, some of the factors that generate the, the dispute. Is it as a result of the lack of knowledge by the, uh, the quote unquote administrators who do administer the, 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 the workers, or is it the workers themselves not understanding the labor, the labor law? I, I, I wouldn't want to say the, the workers uh, may not be understanding the labor law, mm. but uh, I think, you know, strongly that uh, between the employers and the employees we still have a lot uh, to do mm. we stay we still need to educate you know uh, many people and uh, we've done our best we've done our best by by ensuring that uh, every union gain access to the DWA, the decent way right okay and and and, and even the uh, our revised you know regulation uh, uh, number 17 we've done our best mm. but i think in in certain area yes uh you know it's still you know it requires you know some more education okay you know, because sometimes you know some of the complaints that come before us uh we just feel that uh, you know it should not i mean degenerate at that level mm. where to the extent that uh, the employer and the employee will become to be you know somehow you know incompatible mm. and uh, because if only you understand uh, the role of, 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 of the employer and the role of the employee, you know, trust me, I, I wouldn't say there'll be no issue. Yes, sure. Because uh, the fact that we are human, there'll be issues. Sure. Yeah. But uh, I think some of the issues will be, you know, minimal. Okay. If, if, if they were to understand their role. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, talking about some of the interventions that you've been making, uh, your ministry and your team been making, uh, in resolving some of the labor disputes. So let's uh, look at the issue of, of Firestone. Just quite recently, Mr. Minister, uh, we're hearing this back and forth um, uh, uh, no, consultation between the, the House uh, and the Senate you know, bodies on, on, on labor and, and that of the Firestone. And there were this whole plan by Firestone to lay, lay off people, and the government was saying, no, that was not appropriate yet now. Uh, where are we on that? I think we are making progress and all this lead to proper understanding of the law. Mm. You know, proper understanding that I raised of, earlier. Of, of, of the decent work act. Mm. Uh, some people may tend to to consider the work quote unquote a redundancy, uh, to be you know illegal. Mm. Uh, you know, and I have said this, you know, on every platform that I appear. That the fact that uh, you know redundancy is is mentioned, you know, uh, within a decent way, right? I mean, it is legal, but it depends on how you you carry on your redundancy. It, I mean, it depends on how uh, the proceeding is like, and so I mean, this has been you know the problem. You know, with Firestone, mm -hmm. Firestone wanting to to restructure their managerial system on the basis of financial issues, mm -hmm. and uh, that's why when we appear before the the Honorable House of Reps at the time, mm -hmm. we made it clear that uh, when we were speaking in June at the time we appear, I think it was in June or July because they wrote us in June. Mm -hmm. In July when we appear, we said to them, we said to the Honorable Speaker and then at the time we were speaking. Uh, I mean, we're not convinced, we have not seen any in you know, a genuine reason for fire so to, to carry on their redundancy. Mm. And thereafter, when we left from on Capitol Hill and uh, the the house told them to submit themselves to the, the Minister of Labor to go through the procedure. Mm. And um, uh, uh, thereafter they they submitted five years, you know, five years. You know, auditor financial statements. Uh, they submitted so many documents that uh, that could, you know, I mean, support. You know, they are requests to downside uh, 
the employees. Yeah, they are employees. And uh, so on the basis of that, uh, we ask the union because, it, and, and, and all of our proceedings are in line with the law mm. of, of, of the labor sector. Okay. So we ask uh, um, the union, the model union, and that of uh, fire school management to go and sit and look at the issues, you know, look at the numbers. They went and uh, they came to an understanding that, well, I think that the management is proceeding well. And so they drew on an agreement. And I, I would just want to come back quickly mm -hmm. because, because of the fire station issue. The fire station is one of the, 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 the highest you know, employer in this country. Okay. So the president has acknowledged the, the issue of fire station to be very serious. Mm. And this came from that 2018, 2019 you know, 800 plus, you know, redundancy. So the president has constituted a specialized team, uh, they call it a fast and working group. Mm. And it's inclusive of the finance minister, the justice minister, minister of state, the economic advisor, agriculture minister, public works, mini the minister of labor. So, I mean, if, if there are issues, people fly from Nashville, they come to Liberia, we sit around the table, to look at the issues that they have. And uh, so, when the issue about the recent redundancy came about, mm -hmm. we didn't limit our conversation at the Labor Ministry. What we did was, you know, we, we extended the conversation to involve uh, uh, the National Fast and Working Group, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that I just named. Mm -hmm. And so, we had a conversation, we look at the numbers, we look at the presentation, so we're convinced that because of the challenges, I think Firestone, you know, is, is, is in the right you know, direction to, 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 to downsize, you know, the, the aspect. And I will just go to the elementary point. A few years back, a ton of rubber was like 1800 to 1900. Mm. It, it came down somewhere around 2012, 2013, it started dropping, dropping. Today, as we speak, mm. Because you know I'm a rubber farmer. Mm -hmm. Fast to a ton of rubber for now. Because last month I saw they put my rubber three sixty. You know, and sometimes if if you go to Bloomberg in the morning, mm -hmm. you Google on Bloomberg, you know, on your television, you will see the rubber price. So fast to indicate all of these issues. As factors, you know, uh, yes, responsible you know, for that. Yes, but I mean it hurts. It hurts to see our people going out of jobs. Surely. And couple with uh, this global, you know, pandemic, you know, I suppose sometimes when I get in the morning, what I do, I go and monitor the international wire to see how people are losing jobs across the world. Mm. You know, you talk about, you know, NISA, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, all of the cars, you know, you know industry that you see in, around the world, you know, the airline, you know, People don't talk about about two, three thousand, so twenty thousand, you know, but those are bigger industries. So when you just touch about hundred percent within an industry in Liberia, I mean the impact is huge, mm -hmm. you know, negatively. Mm -hmm. So we don't pray for that. But I, I can tell you there are challenges. So with the from. justifications that the fire station gave, uh, are we still going to see our people lose their jobs or uh, are you appealing to them as a government? We, what we did was, fire station had written out uh, that uh, they wanted to, to, to reduce their workforce by 374. So the government negotiated. Hmm. Can you do it in phases? And first what you plan to have accepted that. Okay. Not only that, what Fasto is doing, and uh, that I don't want to, you know, get into the agreement between the honorable house of reps and Fasto management, which they may have some genuine point that the fact that uh, Fasto is trying to reduce its workforce, it should be subject to trying to review, I mean, their concession agreement. They are saying that. Uh, it was on the basis of, uh, you know, providing jobs, you know, for Liberians that you are benefiting, you know, certain incentives. Sure, from the and I, 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 I fully agree with that. So I said to that, well, that is now our area. <laughs> I mean, it is the work of, of the Honorable, our uh, legislature to revisit. To the interest. Of yes. course. I mean, to revisit whatever, you know, I mean, 
I mean, existing concession agreement. Sure. But in line with the labor sector, we are limited. You know, in our area where we can only look at the labor law and make sure that we follow the welfare decision. You're listening to the Bumper Show right here on the OBC 99.9 and other focuses across uh, Liberia. Our first guest on this lap of the program is uh, Labor Minister Moses Colley. Now, Mr. Minister, in keeping with the uh, decent work arc, and then the, the civil service standing order. What is in those two documents that allow for people working under the angle, under the, uh, under the um, umbrella of the government, let's call them uh, public sector workers, uh, to seek for unionization? Is there anything in those two documents? You know, somebody when I was driving at your station, I, I listened to your appeal that uh, you were making to our health workers. Uh, trust me, I have respect. I mean, there are several professions. But in my mind, personally, mm -hmm. you know, as an individual, there are two professions that you have to respect in your life. Those two professions can save life and can just destroy life within a second. Surely. A medical doctor and lawyers. So well, if you had an accident, God forbid, mm. and there was a you know death involved, and, and people would say, Oh, someone had to go to jail for fifteen years, ten years, and you ran to your driver, I mean to your lawyer. Mm. Your body language alone, you are confused when you talk to your lawyer. This is a situation, and so I'm worried. And that lawyer, he or she begin to say, Hey, so relax your mind, you know, we can handle it, don't worry. Right there, you're going to be recomposed, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to compose yourself and uh, regain your, your, you know, your own spirit, your Surely. human spirit. Surely. Uh, considering that you have had someone who have told you that relax, you know, this can be handled. Mm -hmm. But if, if, if you went to the lawyer and, 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 and you explain, the lawyer says, oh, I'm sorry. Hey, I mean, you're going to go to I mean, to jail. You are broken. I mean, you are broken down right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. This goes to the medical center. You know, the medical sector, if you want for your medical checkup, <laughs> you know, just by your doctor or your nurse, after you should have explained, you know, your situation and uh, you run your test and the local aid, or just by, you know, doing examination. And you see the doctor shaking his or her head, he began to press. Mm -hmm. So these people save lives and we respect them highly. We have no intent, and this government, the president that I know, has no intent to downplay the importance of these people in the career mm. or what they do for this nation. But, you know, sometimes, and I, I just walk in here, when I walked in, I heard you come, I mean, uh, you were in conversation with a guy who you were asking mm. if you were at home and you and your wife, your kids came to you to say, please give us this amount and you don't have, what do you do? Mm. You know, and this guy will not able to answer. Yeah, surely. Um, it is obvious that every human, I mean, the expectation of everyone will all be high. Mm. But your ability to maintain or to manage that expectation is what matters. Our people, we have talked over and over and again. And I don't think the government is, is, is insensitive. Firstly, if not as, as we speak, there are specialists that the, the system at GSK is not putting on graduates, you know, specialists. Who well, many other time, you know, a young little experience, Mr. President, you don't expect me to go in the Southeast or anybody in the country as a specialist. Where I go, I don't have any equipment to do my work. So it's needless for me to go there. And the President agreed with the lady. So look, your point if you have a selling point, mm -hmm. if he acknowledges it. The issue about, you know, health workers, I mean, complaining about lack of drugs and equipment, somebody you know, you've been in the country since our crisis time. It didn't just happen 
other president we as administration. It's an H.O. problem. Yeah, we are human. Let, I mean, let us acknowledge. But the way our brothers and sisters try to, pre I mean, to, to present the issue as if this, this administration has less interest within the, or the health sector. I mean, somebody just, you know, called here. There were people on the basis of the scene advocacy whom maybe uh, the former president, uh, President Saleh, felt that, uh, I mean, she could not go beyond the negotiation. She was constrained to her taking certain position where they lost their job. When we took over, the first thing in the process we had there was, hey, let us re instead of the conversation. And even in the leadership, they were paid retroactively. That was a good sign of a leader. You know, but if you you grab an issue where you come to the sector ministry, hmm. they say this is not allowed honor our organic law. And you say no, it must happen. How? You are already, you know, a knowledge. You exist as an association which is legal also. An association leadership can also advocate for the members. But the issue about this uh, a certification of union, you know, uh, so mm -hmm. you know, the, the work of the labor ministry we are limited by two laws. Okay. The civil service standing order and the decent way act of Liberia. Okay. We have said this over and That's over. That's the question I ask. We have said this. I went to Geneva in 2018 May. The PSI, you know, lady Geneva, we all sat there, we had a conversation and on the basis of that, we came here and organized a labor conference, you know, so that we could harmonize the law. They know it. They took part in the conference at the city hall. Now, here is what the decent word at chapter 1, section 1.5 C states. Mm -hmm. This act shall not apply to work falling within the scope of the civil service was standing act. It does not apply. It does not apply. You understand? Mm -hmm. If right now you are working at at the library broadcasting system, mm -hmm. we have authority over you. If there's an issue here, if there's an issue at the LRA, if there's an issue at the Library Patrol Referring Company, the LTA, you know, public corporation. Mm -hmm. You will have absolute authority there. You know, you can have, you know, a union here. But, I mean, ministries, you understand? Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you have an issue... So what is the rationale, Mr. Minister, that you can that you can have uh, uh, public sector workers at, uh, at, at the institutions get named as corporations that they can establish, no, uh, they, they are umbrella they are by it, but it can be uh, ministries, you know, of government. This is by the act of the civil service standing order. Okay. And compared to the decent way act. So Liberia is, is one of the few countries in the world that still deals with two laws within the labor sector. Mm. And we have said that over and over that we need to work are these laws Are these laws in, in harmony with international laws? Of course. Okay. But the decent way, you know, the decent way okay. I was was almost like uh, you know cut and paste of of, of of the ILO standing order. Okay. Of course. You know the ILO I mean was the main brain behind you know the decent way out of Liberia that came to be twenty fifteen. Okay. So 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 they are not they are not in contradiction. But what other countries did was to have harmonized in other law. And that's what people need to understand that the decent way I came to be, 2015, if I came to full force, uh, July of 2019. So this is a new law. Okay. 
Okay, there's a new law. Can we, because law, every law is subject to amendment. Because always, it's like you, you sat and did your own, you know, correspondence. Mm -hmm. You know, you say, well, let me review my own letter, mm -hmm. and, you know, to see how I can proofread. So every communication is subject to a proofreading. So like laws, laws are subject to amendment. So relative to the health workers, uh, they cannot be given a union status unless these two laws, the two laws are harmonized. Thank you. Thank you. And we have educated them. We have written them. How long does that take, Mr. 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 Uh, Minister, if we were to do that? Well, well, well I, I don't say about Capitol Hill. Okay. <laughs> because these ICE, the civil service standing order came from the legislature. The decent word act came from the legislature. So I don't have control over it as if they are rubber stamp. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and it requires, you know, research in the law to say we need to do this uh, so that we can harmonize the law. But if, if we were explain to you and you say, the government is intentionally, you know, denying, denying you. Yeah, yeah, How? Yeah. When you know the law, it's like I said to somebody, if if the law says, or the system at the University of Liberia, mm -hmm. that before you enroll, even though the Constitution says it is a right of every citizen to gain access to education, does that mean that you enter the U.S. without an entry? Not at all. There is a procedure. There is a system. You so must you go, go through processes. Yeah, so you go and say, look, look, I'm a Liberian. I'm entitled to my education and I must enroll. It's just simple. But um, I, I, I don't know for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. You know, the way people are trying to politicize. In fact, I listened to one young lady who's, who said that the president insulted them. Is that the president that you know? That you saw, but is that the president that you know? Because I sat in that meeting from start to end. The president asked me, Mr. Minister, why you think that uh, um, deep public servants, you know, cannot be unilateral? They ask the civil servant, why? They ask the justice minister, why? So, I mean, I, I, these are intellectual issues that people should look at. And somebody sit on the platform to say that the president insulted them, the president that I know. That did not happen. You're listening to the Bumper Show, rented on the OBC 99.9 and other frequencies across Liberia. We heard from the Labour Minister. He just said it all. And clearly, Christ one said, uh, until uh, ministries, uh, governments, uh, public sector, uh, public sector workers, so the people working with the government, especially at various ministries, uh, the only way you can set up uh, yourself as a union, unless the Decent Work Act and the Civil Service turn the order. Are harmonized and amended. You listen to the bumper show, Mr. Minister. Before uh, our shuttle be put in uh, course, and let me just um, uh, ask this question on, on, on different things. Let's transition a bit. Uh, we 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 about to go to the elections, Mr. Minister, <laughs> in December. And 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 but first, let me ask you. No, nobody's uh, listening to us. Uh, we we got two major contenders so far. I mean, in the whole race, uh, Senator Dallas Dillon and 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 it's almost far. Which one do you think you, you're going to follow for? Uh, so how are you? I, Moses <laughs> calling this no, kind of a question. No, impossible that you could, you could, no, you could do something on the ground. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't pretend in politics. Oh, okay. But about 12 years I spent on Capitol Hill, I had sufficient, you know, uh, you know, knowledge and experience. I, I am the national chair mm. of the Liberia People Democratic Party. Okay. And the, the LPDP is one of the constituents in the political party to the coalition. Okay. So the Honorable Tamo Fala is our candidate. It's and, your and, choice. And, and I can tell it's you clear. for free. Mm -hmm. I can tell you for free. You know, uh, whenever people are going to election, you evaluate yourself. It's glaring. It's glaring that threat, uh, misconduct, will not revive. You know the December 8th election. People don't want to go to election. The law is not prepared to go to election. Mm. If you were to go to election December 8th, the issue of the law will be a history politically. You sure of that? Yes, when you come to history. Why are you so upbeat? Because I, I, uh, uh so what? If, if, 
if you want to get my you know my expert opinion when it comes to you know legislative work you know it, it is it is you know sudden that uh, Liberians you know some Liberians you know do not actually you know x-ray they do not evaluate uh, you know the performance of a certain legislator they long you know legislatively mm -hmm. they long have done nothing on Capitol Hill I was there for 12 years, 12 unbroken years, and I played a major role in the level of the leadership. But Thomas, when I've been there, what has he done? What are you talking about? <laughs> what legislatively do you want to compare? I mean, Thomas Fala and Delon, the issue about legislative work mm. is not uh, Sobo George coming to social media to talk. Your people. Your people elected you to do the work in that chamber to make sure that you represent them there, that you you exercise your oversight, that you perform your effective lawmaking. It's not where when you feel on the floor that is a sign of weakness in on the part of any lawmaker who will choose to leave from that theater. To run to social media, to 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 rain or insult on your colleague, that is not a way for. Let me tell you what happened when we got elected first in two thousand five. Mm -hmm. October. Okay, so can take few calls. December we and because we're all somehow novices, you know, in uh, the process of uh, in the law making representation oversight, the the UN took us to Ghana. You know, we went there for tutoring. For orientation. Orientation. There's one thing I learned, and I won't forget. Mm. In Ghana, the guys got to say that the minority will have a say and majority have their way. So, and when the guys that are, you know, giving that slogan and other things, you know, in the chamber, because we should sit, you know, by each other. So we asked them and said, look, as a parliamentarian, you have to be strong in trying to lobby to convince your colleagues on your opinion. Don't be lazy in that. You got to be strong. If you are not strong to convince your colleague, then you're not a lawmaker. In actuality, what I it's, it's, I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. you can be even an independent candidate. Mind you, everyone that sits in there, you know, everyone has a conscience. If you give up an idea to me, the first thing you go from seat to seat. You don't just sit down. It's, it's not a form of disturbance. It's a form of trying to lobby. Maybe you have you have a communication that you want to prefer something. You don't just jump to carry the issue on the floor. If you want to put the issue on the floor like the second Tuesday, you know, in October the first thing, but this week, you begin to go, you know, where I call it love. You go from office to office, I have this idea. I think when we do this, it's going to be good for our country. You be strong in, in your negotiation. That is where people call you a strong like they talk. But you don't come, you denigrate your colleague, and you think they will listen to you. And you go on social media. Then you go on social media. Every time he fails over there, he go. So, so look, look, not everyone will go on that Capitol Hill because that is a political institution. So not everyone will enroll in there that comes out with color fly. Okay, no. now, now let, let's take a few calls quickly so because he has, he has no good grade. Okay, I know at five fifteen we should be taking in uh, uh, Senator J. Milton Tiergen of 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 the of the Senate. He will be looking at some of the pol political issues. Uh, let's take a few calls quickly. Your name and where you calling from? Hello, hello. Oh, this call is not ready. Let's take another call on the line. Your name and where you calling from? Okay, thank you for having me. I, I don't even need a five for two. Yes, quickly, quickly.
Okay, second note zero seven seven six zero eight nine seven one three or better still zero eight eight zero five one four zero nine six. That's the numbers to call. You are live on the bumper show. Your name, where you calling from? I'm okay. Quickly, quickly, go ahead. Okay. Okay, make up your calls already. We'll take a little more calls quickly. 0776089713 or better still 0880514096. That's the numbers to call. You are live. Your name and where you calling from? Yes, sir. Go ahead quickly. You said Gavi, you said where? You said where? Same Gavi. Same Gavi. Okay, okay. Mano. Okay. Mano Power. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mama. Let's take this last call quickly. Your name, where you call it from? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go right ahead quickly. Okay, medicine. Let's do squeeze this one in quickly. Your name, where are you calling from? Yes, quickly, Emma. Okay, I think you made your points already. We can go. We can go for it now. Yes, go ahead, sir. Well, I, if if I got a very good claim, mm. I, I think he tried to talk about contract holders. I, uh, in the first place, under the labor law, every contract should be specific. Okay, should have clear term, uh, time frame, uh, benefits. You know, should be clearly indicated. Mm. And so, if your contract was you know prematurely you know aborted yeah. you have all right and this is where i've always you know, encouraged you know liberians or, or everyone that is within the labor sector we do not have the capacity as a ministry to go all out to scout out there for cases okay even the police officer will not go in the street and look for case. People need to bring you have case to up. run to the police station that somebody stole my phone or somebody did. So you, I, I, we want to encourage Liberians. They should be strong enough 
to come to the labor offices now to the Morovia because we are across the country. Okay. And if you went to any labor officer in the county and uh, someone tried to downplay your interest, please try to proceed to central. You will see if we're not going to, to, to address you know, your concern. But every contract should indicate the time frame and the amount to be paid. Okay. Yes. Now, some might talk about fast issue, how my tone is soft. I think in my opening statement, mm -hmm. I said this, but there is something that people, many people don't understand. The law is like the constitution of Liberia. When you go at the table of justice, you see that black cloth in front of justice. Justice is blind. Mm -hmm. Justice is not one-sided. But many people believe that the labor law is for the interest of employees. And, 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 and which this is, is which wrong. Is wrong. No. That's the, fact. the law is for both the employer and the employee. Okay. We are only the referee. When you play fire, we say you are wrong. And, and you don't honor obligation to acknowledge our opinion. Mm -hmm. That's why from the labor ministry, you go to the labor court. From the labor court, you go to the Supreme Court. So we do not impose on you. Okay. But people got the mentality that, you know, the law is for the employee. And so, I mean, there's no way that we can be wrong. So for someone to suggest that our tune has changed, uh, tune has changed on what? I explain that at the time we appear on Capitol Hill, at that time, the submission or justification for the redundancy, we never had answers. Has been done yet? Yes, we said it. And our document, I mean, are available for public view. You can't there anytime. The media and the one, you know, you you are allowed to come. Now, okay. the labor sector will talk about, you know, Mano. I'm handling the case right now with Mano. People came, they said, uh, they were coerced, uh, you know, to sign on to early, you know, retirement. We are looking at it. But guess what happened? You said you were coerced, hmm. and when you took the check, you know, you took check. You know, you say you are coerced. Um, under the labor law, you have you have one month in your notice. But Mano get three months. Mm -hmm. So that three months they have induced. Okay, okay the employee to have gone, you know, to have gone for for, for the LA you know, retirement. So as a where is the money? Because we want to get the money back to Mano so they can go back and say, but we want to use the money. But now we're standing, we are looking at it, but I don't I don't like for people to just go on public radio to say this company is doing it. You come with facts. You come with facts and will be strong to listen to everybody. You know. Now I I, I heard the, the, the plea from Gavel from Lofa County, my nephew. Let me say this. The president is inclined, the labor ministry, I mean the entire government, you know, is inclined to ensure that. We appeal to our people and we're still talking to them. I think we'll get somewhere because I know there are professionals in, among them. We know that they got good mind for this country. So we are not upset with them and we'll continue to talk. Mr. Minister, thank you very much for taking time off the busy schedule. Thank you.